อเมริกาฟาฮับกินซันผมมีแม่แฟนส์อันสมอาลาพีพูมีกอปาวิไซคลันอืมอเมริอเมริกาฟรอนวิมีกอเดเทคเกอร์ไทม์คัสวินโอวิอาฟริชูมันบอเดี๋ยวคาร์ว่าคาร์เวย์พาสนิวส์เซตเซตเฟมีบีบรอกดงเมื่อเดี๋ยวพันโอเวอร์ไซด์กูอินฮูมบอทนู้ฮัซซาร์เดย์ติงอันไอเอ็มเอ็นอัพคลอสต์เดคาร์อันไอนอติสต์ดัตไอดอนเนตุคลอสต์ไอดอสไตร์เซิร์ฟเวอร์ฟันิตันไอบอกิดอันไอดัตไอลูสไม่ฟุต This was um, on um, April 10th. Um, I was um, just about to leave work. Well, actually, I had um, just left work um, a day before. Uh, well, a day before my birthday, actually, um, I was coming down um, to La John Street, and a careless driver, I must say, um, he tried to overtake me. And uh, just before reaching the intersection of um, New Road and Douglas Jones, and uh, upon um, taking um, uh, left, he clipped me because he saw one next vehicle coming in. He clipped me and um, I lost control of the um, like the cycle and I ended up against a wall um, by Chief City. You know, um, at that time, you know, well, I had suffered a broken collarbone, as you notice. Here, um, I, you know, well, I was down until the ambulance came for me. It happened because a man was coming out of Coastal and didn't look his direction towards me around the roundabout and crashed into me. I already know that I have a broken leg. That was the um, only injury. So you've been here for three months recovering the leg. Yes, ma'am. Did they tell you why you you have to be in here so long? Um, I'm in here so long off of the um infection that I caught. Those are testimonies of three recent survivors of motorcycle accidents recovering at the KHMH, but it's just a fraction of the number of patients they've seen this year alone. After a long weekend that saw four fatal accidents, there were two more this week. After a fatal collision in Crooked Tree Village, he got into an accident that left him dead on the highway. I was heading home when the accident happened on Forest Drive in Belmopan. In 2024, 27 of the 65 road traffic fatalities have involved motorcycles. And many of those who survive end up in the care of physical therapist Noel Avila. He said the number and frequency of victims has increased. We've seen a lot. I think we've seen an increase in the last couple of months because, I don't know, the, um, the way people drive, I guess, and I think um, <clears throat> people on motorcycles too. I mean, me as a driver, we see people doing all sorts of things, overtaking on the right, left. So they subject themselves to certain accidents. I can't remember a week where we don't have somebody that needs some sort of rehabilitation concerning that type of thing. And Avila says that the types of injuries he sees can range from a simple fracture to amputation and can even eventually result in a loss of life. We have fractures that are people um, would have fractures that the doctor couldn't really figure out how to save the leg. So we have people with amputees um, below the knee, above the knee. We have had people who have died with fractures that um, for a long time can't heal properly. A lot of times the doctor would recommend that we do just stimulation to help bone hardening. And sometimes during that process, people develop other, other issues because of, you know, things that might happen along the way based on their own personal health. For 21-year-old Liston Emmanuel, who lives in Sarari village, he has lost over 10 family members to motorcycle accidents. And after his accident, this footballer knew that amputation was the only way to save his life. Much muscle tissue may miss him. And the chance for me to have my leg, I mean, I'm in one of them. Like, he never worth it, so I just decided to lose it, to be honest. Uh, God said it that way, so nothing like I know friends and young friends, like with mine when I was strong, would feel like I may have give up for myself, but I can't because I'm young and I, and I already know what I want to do next with myself. And despite losing his leg, his dream of owning a car hasn't changed. But for the other two survivors, they plan on getting back on their bikes. In the case of Jesse August, while he survived without amputation, he almost lost his life during recovery because he was thrown into depression. I haven't said this um, to anyone as yet, um, only my closest friend. No? Um, I had thought of suicide, actually, um, like, believe it or not. I mean, I'm a very active person. No? Um, I tend to play football at least um, like three or four times for the um, week. 
Um, I love to fish, but uh, I mean, as an active person and you're not able to do the things that you want to do, I mean, at home, um, being by yourself, um, just the four walls, you know, it, it, you know, well, it has been tough. It has been really tough. But um, since the therapy, uh, you know, um, along with the help of friends and, you know, um, I'm just trying to um, like distract my mind, I've been able to get through that. So despite this accident, you're still prepared to go back on a motorcycle? Uh, my wife doesn't want me to go back on a cycle, but of course, I mean, as a man, I mean, I would love to get a cycle back again. And while Avila said that the rate of returning motorcycle drivers who get into a second accident is low, there's always a new patient. Alicia Pollard, who manages the General Surgical Ward at KHMH, explained that it's taken up a lot of their resources since about half of their beds are filled with accident victims. Has there ever been a time, maybe in the past couple of years, that this ward has not had a motorcycle victim? I cannot recall. I cannot recall. And we're a ward that holds 28 patients. Our average on a daily is about 24 patients we have on the ward. And within recent, 80% of them are orthopedic cases with um, broken bones and about 50, about 40 to 60% are road traffic accidents. Do you feel that recently, do you feel that um, you have a, a level of space issue where you don't have enough space for other people, other patients who are coming? Definitely, definitely. We've, um, it's an issue we've been battling um, every day. We have more patients coming into the hospital and we don't have the space to put them because we're attending to these patients. And the increase in accidents correlates directly to the increasing number of motorcycles on the road. The survivors we spoke to said the decision to purchase the bike was mainly financial. Why did you choose a motorcycle over a vehicle? Um. Yes, expensive. Because, because I know my young self, I could, I could have my own a vehicle. Mm -hmm. I could have myself to own a vehicle, but I just made it at the cycle range. Then time, because I never made own a cycle for my life. I've, December, I was always tell my parents I may own a vehicle by Christmas time. What was the decision into getting a motorcycle? Was it because of, um, you know, gas is cheaper, it's, it's cheaper than a vehicle? Um, compared to the vehicle, yes, of course. Uh, normally I would um, put in um, $20 gas and that would last you about two weeks, no? But Avila says it's not always worth it. The first thing I would say to the patient, get rid of the bike, try and invest in a vehicle. It's far more safer to commute in a vehicle than on a motorbike. People do the motorbike thing because of economics, you know, the gas prices, whatever, and they think that they, they do a lot of savings by using a motorbike. But it's also very dangerous in that. A delicate and too often deadly balance between affordable transport and the costly risk to both life and limbs. Courtney Menzies, 7 News.